going on everybody uh, I figured I'd upload a video kind of explaining a little bit more about my new Quixel mixer texture that I made and basically it's a beat up road uh, a little bit of puddles some patches a little bit of uh, scattered wet leaves across it well some cracks and a little bit of the deformation of the uh, road itself bumps and stuff like that and the program I'm using is Quixel Mixer and this is free as well as Quixel Bridge this was just basically released or at least came out a little over a year ago however it was made free um, I believe a few days ago maybe about a week or so and this works in tandem with Quixel Bridge so that you can bring your materials into Unreal Engine 4 so I guess the deal is um, Megascans, uh, the digital online library from Quixel is also free, uh, but only if you're using it for Unreal Engine 4. If you're using it for like Unity or anything else like that, I believe that you have to pay a subscription. So if you're a Unreal Engine 4 user, uh, I guess you'll be happy to know that that is exactly what that is. It's free. And I just figured I'd mess around with this program. I'm still learning it and uh, pretty happy with my results. Now you can change basically a lot of aspects of each layer. Uh, it works like Photoshop in a lot of ways and uh, I'm not going to get into a whole tutorial about it but uh, there's tutorials out there that can better explain how this works. But I'll show you basically um, just for the sake of it adjusting uh, things like the water So you can actually change how it looks. This would be the same, I'm guessing, with like a lot of other uh, decals or things that you put on the actual road itself, like cracks and uh, patches. Um, I do know that some of these you can't really mess around with uh, certain parameters, but I do know that you can mess with the opacity, you can mess with... Um, masking which means that you can basically take certain decals and mask them away um, using threshold you could actually use different layers to like blend in with the patches or you can take them away or only make certain points of uh, some of the decals show up and then with things like uh, noise layers you can actually create it so that the entire plane itself is actually bumpy to mimic a real road and yeah, I mean, it's a pretty powerful program. If you look up a few of these videos on YouTube, you'll be able to see what this is all about and what it could actually do. Um, it's not just making materials, you could actually create a sort of a 3D element with the materials. Now, the only way you're really going to be able to utilize uh, the full on 3D elements of these materials is to add tessellation to your materials within Unreal Engine 4, and that's pretty much what I've done with one of my textures and I'll show that to you right now. So I brought my material into Unreal Engine already. As you can see here. Now this isn't just on a flat plane and if you can see in the, the edges here it's a little bit wavy. Now that's not the only thing. If we go zoom in here try to get into a good position where it can actually see the lighting you can see that tessellation is actually occurring on the mesh. Now this is just a flat plane that I brought in from 3ds Max but I subdivided it enough so that there's enough polygons and vertices so that when I set this up in the material editor um, it would actually cause this to tessellate and if you don't do that it's not going to work right. So basically all that this does is create subdivisions within a mesh that you already have and you could do this in a 3D program, like make a mesh and then just apply the texture to it properly using height maps and normal maps and stuff like that. But um, when I was trying to do this in 3ds Max, for some reason, certain edges uh, were dipping down and they weren't supposed to, like completely flatten evening out with the plane. And I couldn't fix it, so I just decided to bring it into Unreal Engine and try to do it that way. But as you can see, if you look at the edges of the sphere here, it's actually bumpy. So this is just a material instance that I created and uh, 
let's see if I can minimize this real quick. So over here is the actual material. Open this up real quick, and I will post a link in the description uh, of the video that I found that actually helps me put this together. Because I got to be honest with you, I'm not really you know knowledgeable about a lot of the uh, blueprints or material methods you can make really good materials uh, in Unreal Engine 4. I pretty much reference a lot of things or save videos to my hard drive and try to learn it later. But basically, uh, there's a you know there's methods to get your materials to be more realistic, uh, to add parameters and fields and stuff so that if you wanted to change certain settings that you normally might not be able to do by just hooking up these textures to the material uh, here. And it gives you a lot more options. So that's basically what you know material instancing does. Um, once you hook up the nodes and name them, you'll have these fields that you can mess around with and you'll be able to change details such as, you know, tessellation in this case to better represent the original texture in Quixel Mixer. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, if you want to download this program, it's free. Uh, you're going to have to get Quixel Bridge as well. That's also free to everyone. Uh, the only thing that's not free is the Megascans Digital Library. It's only free if you're using Unreal Engine 4 and have an account with Epic Games. So you just have to sign in with your Epic account and they all know that you're tied up to that because basically Epic Games acquired Quixel, uh, bought them. So they now control Quixel. So as long as you're using their engine, you basically get the entire uh, Megascans library free, which is awesome because that's pretty much the only engine I use. So yeah. Um, Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll try to make a better tutorial later to better explain some aspects about this. Uh, I got to figure out how to get this to run better without freezing so much while I'm recording. I think that's one of the major issues I'm having. And even though I dropped the performance uh, details, it's still having issues. So either way, uh, if you're curious, just go on YouTube, look up some Quixel Mixer videos, uh, and they'll give you everything you really need to know on how to use this program properly. So, all right, guys. I'll catch you later.